that I love best about working with Ray Perez is the fact that he knows what he's doing. And he's been there. I think another thing that I even add onto that is he's tested all of this, right? It's not just a theory for him, it's in practice. You know, I think the coolest thing about working with Ray is we kind of instantly bonded. We're very similar, similar in entrepreneurship, similar mindsets. I saw his presence, I saw his personal branding, and then he did a speech on branding. So as soon as I saw that, when he asked the audience if anybody wanted to be uh, involved in what he's doing, it just really eliminated any concerns, and I was more excited than anything. He really has a desire and heart to to give and create win-win-win scenarios, and he really does that, I see, within his team and with his clients. and and just how he you know, approaches his life and his businesses. I really feel like I came away with a lot of tools and a lot of skills and just a lot of knowledge that I didn't have before and, and that was just really just everything that I learned from Ray was just pretty impressive. He is really a brand builder. He helps many entrepreneurs build their brand. Ray's done a great job helping other people and, and this is why he's become a fantastic, successful mentor also to many entrepreneurs out in the market. Ray, two thumbs up, buddy. Keep up the good work. I love Ray Perez. He does what he says he'll do. He's a giver. So today, um, usually I talk about personal branding because that's what I'm known for. And I will talk a little bit about personal branding, give you guys the three main pillars of how to build a successful personal brand, really supercharge and amplify who you are. Because whether you like it or not, you have a personal brand. Now, the reality is you might have a great personal brand. You might have a bad personal brand. You might have a personal brand that nobody really pays attention to. We do not know. Uh, neither is good or bad or right or wrong. The question is, how effective do you want to be? How quickly do you want to move forward? Uh, how, how much do you want to benefit by leveraging something you already have? So I'll talk a little bit about personal branding, but I'd really also like to dive in into networking and presenting, basically what I'm doing. If you're listening to me right now and you do any type of presentation, whether it be live in person to a big audience, a small boardroom, or you do a virtual Zoom, a webinar, a podcast interview, if you do any type of presentation, what I'm going to be sharing with you guys is going to be a game changer. And if you do any type of networking, if you go to seminars, trade shows, conferences, masterminds, networking events, events just like this, live and virtual, networking is a key to building business because I truly believe that business is built on relationships. That's actually my personal tagline is business is built on relationships. So let's kick it off really quick with a little bit about personal branding. And I want to see some interaction in the chat. So if you're listening to me right now, I want you to say hi, Ray, inside the chat so I know that you're interacting with me so we can have some back and forth. And um, I don't know if you guys can mute yourselves or not, but you can just drop into the chat. Thank you, hi, Ray. And my name is R-E-Y. Does anybody know what that means in Spanish? Drop it in the chat. What does R-E-Y, Ray, mean in Spanish? There we go, Jay. Thank you. It means king. My name is king in Spanish. That's right. Ray the king. So here we go. Number one, to building a personal brand, there's three pillars. First pillar is your visual identity. Okay. Second pillar is your verbal identity. And the last one is your value identity. Let's talk about your visual identity first. This is what people see. And just like a really cool, nice red Ferrari passing by, what you visually see is what catches your attention. So when you're building a personal brand, we got to focus on the visual identity first because it's the first thing that's going to catch people's attention. So number one is color. You may or may not know this, but color has an emotion attached to it. What we work with our clients, we first sit down and we show them what's called the color emotion chart. And in this color emotion chart, it shows all the different colors in the spectrum and it has words next to them. These words are emotions such as excitement, trust, credibility, power, health, and all the different colors have an emotion attached to it. So when we're picking a brand color, whether it be for a personal brand, a corporate brand, it doesn't matter. We're always asking, what is the emotion that you want your audience to feel when they see your brand? And that's how we choose a color. 
What we don't do is because the owner likes purple, because when they were a child, they had the purple pillow and grandma gave it to them and it was so special and it's been their favorite color since they were three years old. So therefore they pick purple as their company color. That's not the way to do it. That serves the person, it doesn't serve the audience. And it can't be a personal choice. One of the most difficult parts of going through the branding process with our clients is separating their personal preferences and opinions opposed to what's gonna work best for the target market. So drop inside the chat, what color are most medical companies? Drop it in the chat. What color are most medical companies? Let's see, let's see, let's see who can get this. Come on. Okay, I see the right answer multiple times. The color is blue. Does anyone know what blue emotionally represents? Drop it in the chat if you know why blue. Blue cross blue, trust. There we go. Man, this is a smart group. I like this. All right, so blue is a trust color. I, I'll never forget, I always get this question. Ray, why do the majority of your clients have blue as their color? Like, do you just make blue for everybody? No, the reality is the majority of my clients provide some type of service. They do some level of consulting or coaching. And obviously, what's the, what's the emotion we want our audience to feel? Trust. If they're going to pay us tens of thousands of dollars for what we share as information and knowledge, they got to trust us. So we're not choosing pink. We're not choosing purple. We're not choosing red. We're choosing blue because it connects trust. All right. Now, here's, here's another piece. One. When someone makes a buying decision, drop it inside the chat, they're making a buying decision based on what? What are all buying decisions based on? Drop it in the chat. Does anybody know? All buying decisions are based on emotion. There we go. Backed by what? Emotion backed by what? Does anybody know? All buying decisions are based on emotion backed by logic. So, doesn't it make logistical sense that when we're choosing a color, we want people to be emotionally connected to that color in a way that's going to feel trust. Therefore, they want to buy from us. That's how it works. Now, in addition to color, if you're building a personal brand, your, your photo or quote unquote headshot, I personally like to call it a hero shot because I think we're all superheroes. I think we all have our own superpowers. Everybody's got a different power, right? And I love building a, a, a someone's personal brand because it's kind of like we're building this whole superhero look. So you got to decide what's that look for you. Is it a jacket? Is it a suit? Is it a tie? Is it a bow tie? Is it a, a dress? Do you wear a bow in your hair? Do you wear a hat? Do you wear glasses? Do you wear a handkerchief? What is your look? What is that superhero outfit that you're known for? We think about Batman and we think about the black suit, right? We think about Superman, we think about the red and blue. So what is your superhero outfit? And that's what we want to have inside your headshot or what I call hero shot. Now, this is important because when you're shared digitally, this is how people are going to think of you. Because the way that the human brain works is they see, they listen, or they read, and they put an imprint in their brain, in their memory banks. And that imprint stays there. And when they hear your name or when you are referred to them, what they're going to do is they're going to go in those memory banks and they're going to pull up that picture, just like your computer does when you're searching on Google. And it's going to pop up that picture. You need to ask yourself, what picture do you want for people to pop up in their minds when they think of you, when they share your name? right? It's interesting because I'm always wearing jackets, right? I usually wear a button shirt. I'm trying to be a little bit more casual now, but that's because I've been doing this for six years and I have enough credibility that I can start playing with my look a little bit. But the reality is people always think about me in a jacket. When they see me in shorts and a t-shirt, they never recognize me besides maybe the hairdo. Other than that, they don't recognize me because my brand is always in a suit. It's always in a nice jacket. That is my brand. And it's been that way for a very long time. And it's like, I'm in my outfit. And the reality is this, I feel good when I'm in my jacket. Now, would I rather be in shorts and t-shirt? 100%. But in the end of the day, we don't do it for ourselves. We do it because we understand when you go out there to fight crime, when you go out there to actually do and promote your business, you're going to put on that superhero outfit because you're going to feel empowered and you're going to look different. 
It's kind of like Batman saying, you know what? I feel lazy today. I'm going to go fight crime today in my gym shorts because it feels more comfortable. I'm not going to put on the bat suit. You know, that wouldn't actually really work. It's the same thing for you. And the last thing when it comes to visual, it's making sure that everything is consistent, okay? If someone's going to your Facebook, it better be the same image that's on your LinkedIn, that's on your Instagram, that's on your Twitter, and that's on your YouTube. Because if it isn't, then there's going to be a lack of credibility. Consistency equals credibility. Lack of consistency equals lack of credibility. Now, mind you, this will be subconscious. It won't be necessarily a conscious decision of, of why they don't trust you, but it will be subconscious. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I hope some of you are familiar with the supermarket on the East Coast called Publix. Drop inside the chat if you know what color is the logo, the sign of Publix. What color is it? Drop it inside the chat. Publix, public supermarket, it's green. So how would you feel, drop it in the chat, if you showed up to a Publix and the sign was blue? You show up to a new city, you go to Publix, you got to get something, and the sign is blue. How would you feel about that? Same sign, but it's blue. Confused, shocked, it's not Publix, it's a fake, confused, awkward, um, not sure, weird, sketchy. That's exactly how you make people feel when they show up to your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, and you have different photos. There's inconsistency. It's like Publix, pink, blue, green, orange. It's still Publix, but it feels weird because it's no consistency. This is one of the easiest fixes that all of you can do right now. Find a good headshot, upload the exact same one to every single one of your social medias so that you have a consistent look. And when anybody finds you, they can go, that's who it is. That's who it is. That's who it is. All right. Number two, verbal identity. This is the most important because in marketing, if you're a Dan Kennedy student, if you're a copywriting student, you understand that language is the most important part of marketing. There is nothing more important than the language. Okay. It's not the graphic design. It's not the cool pictures. It's not the awesome video. It's the language. And this is the branding guy telling you who loves to do the visuals, right? I'm still telling you that language is the most important. So when it comes to building a personal brand and even a business brand, there's a couple pieces of language that are most important. Number one, expert title. Expert title is who you are. And an expert title must convey a higher perception of value to your audience and possibly, preferably, a little bit of intrigue as well. Because if they know exactly what you do, then they're not going to ask you anything, and there's no engagement. And what are we after? We're after people engaging with us, because once they engage with us, we have permission to share who we are and what we do. So let me tell you what is not an expert title. CEO, founder, president, vice president, director, owner, these are just positions in companies. These are not expert titles. They do not give a higher perception of value to who you are. Unless you're working for a very well-known company like Disney, then that would probably help. But I think this is a room full of entrepreneurs and business owners who are, you are the Disney. You are the face of the business, which means we need to increase your perception of value the moment someone comes across you and your brand. Now, here's a quick question. Drop inside the chat. Do you feel that you will connect with more people live in person or virtual over the course of your life? Will you connect with more people live in person or virtual over the course of your life? Drop it inside the chat. Let's see. Let's see. Kim said live. Okay. I'm, I'm curious how live could be possible. Live means you physically need to be somewhere. That is probably one of the most limiting ways that we can meet people in today's age. Right now, I'm meeting 120 something of you from my home in Miami. That is not, I'm not gonna meet 120 something people over the course of this month live in person. It's not possible. Now, if I'm speaking at events all the time, it is, but even as a professional speaker, I might speak two or three times on a physical stage with a couple hundred people. So the answer is virtual. Now, here's the difference. Live, virtual, digital. 
Does anybody know the difference between virtual and digital? This is super important. Does anybody know the difference between virtual and digital? Mike, you're right. Digital would be video, which means it's been recorded already. So right now, you are connecting with me virtually. The moment this presentation is over and the moment this broadcast goes out to the world, it becomes digital. But digital lives on. You will connect with more people digitally than you'll ever connect virtually, than you'll ever collect live. So digital is number one, virtual is number two, and live is number three. Why is this important? Because the language that you use in your branding and marketing will convey your perception of value without you having to say a word. And let me demonstrate so you understand what I mean. I'm going to introduce myself two different ways. And I want you to really listen closely. Tell me how you feel when I introduce myself. Okay? And then drop inside the chat which one has a higher perception of value in your opinion, number one or number two. Here we go. Welcome, everyone. My name is Ray Perez, and I'm owner and founder of AMP Productions. Welcome, everyone. My name is Ray Perez, and I'm a global branding expert. Which one has a higher perception of value, one or two? Drop it in the chat. Let's take a look in the chat. Everybody look in the chat. I would say that 98% of the audience would say number two. 98%. It's not 100%, but it's pretty freaking close. And the reason is you have no idea who AMP Productions is. Doesn't matter what your company name is when you're connecting with someone because they don't know, so they don't care. What matters is if you can benefit them. So when I say global branding expert, you think, huh, could this guy do something for me? Or maybe he could do for uh, benefit someone that I know. And that increases the perception of value by simply using a choice of words when you introduce yourself. So I ask everyone, pick up your business card and look at what it says on it. If it doesn't have an expert title that increases your perception of value, that's the next request that I have. Update all your social medias with the same photo and work on creating an expert title for yourself. Okay? Number two. The second most important piece of language when building your personal brand and your company brand, all of your companies should also have this, USP, Unique Selling Proposition. This is what you do for them, not to be confused with what you do. A lot of entrepreneurs just go off and explaining what they do. I don't mean to be rude, but nobody cares what you do. All they care about is what you do for them. And the reason that's so is because we are all interested in what? W-I-F-M. What's in it for me? So when you're creating a USP, I want you to consider what are the results that your service produces. And what are the benefits of the results your service produces? Whatever that language is, that's the language I want you to start using to create your USP because that's what people want to buy. They want the results and they want the benefits of the results. They don't want the services. They don't want the features. And this is probably one of the most important parts of marketing and branding because you can write an entire email, an entire website, an entire you know, document uh, sharing your business, but if it's all about the features and the services, and it's not talking about the results and the benefits, you're going to have a very, very, very low conversion rate. And this is why copywriting is probably one of the highest paid professions on the planet besides speaking, because it can make the difference between you making $10,000 and making $100,000 in one presentation in one pitch. And you tell me, would you rather make $10,000 or $100,000? Drop it in the chat. Let me know. I hope everybody says 100. All right, let's move on to number three, value identity. 
Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Noella, Pedro, Mark. 100K. That's what we're going after. All right. So value, in my opinion, is the most valuable, <laughs> is the best way I could put it. Because language is the most important. But the value identity is what's going to get people really connected to you. I don't want to get all woo-woo on you, but understand that we're all energy, right? In the end of the day, you ever, you ever heard the saying, oh, I got a good feeling about that person. Well, that's because we're energy, right? And if you really scientifically break it down and you put a microscope to yourself and you break it down into the little atoms and all the way down to the molecular structure, you're going to see that we're just a vibration of energy. So other human beings can feel your energy. So if you haven't worked on your value identity, what you stand for, what's your purpose, what's your mission, what's your pa passion, why do you do what you do, then there might be really great visuals, there might be some awesome language, but it's gonna fall short for the longevity of building your tribe, your followers in that long-term connection because the energy and the feeling is not there. So my challenge to all of you is to really sit down and consider and start to write down why you do what you do. Most of you know what you do. Some of you can explain how it works, but most of you have never sat and really thought, what's the real purpose? What's, why do I really do what I do besides making money, of course, right? If that's your answer, then we need to find a bigger purpose for you, right? It's not just about making money. It's about making impact. It's about making a difference. You know, uh, Ty talked about when we went on that trip and I, every trip that I go to, I always try to find a local orphanage and I always volunteer my time. It doesn't matter what country I am and here in the States too. It's just something that I'm committed to doing. I also carry around in every single one of my cars and I have a few cars, I have seven cars, every single one of my cars inside the middle cup holder, I put $10 in ones because every time I see a homeless person, I'm going to give them a few bucks. It's something I started a long time ago. And if they ask me, I have a rule. If someone asks me for money or for support and I open my wallet and all I have is 20s or 50s, I'll give them whatever I have. If I don't have a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, I'll give them a twenty dollar bill because I've made a commitment that when someone needs help I, and I am blessed enough that I have the capability to do that. So I really want you to consider why do you do what you do? What's your mission? What's your purpose? What's your value? What are you committed to? Because that's, and share it. Once you establish it, share it with your community. For, for us, it's all about elevating leaders to monetize their mission, live their full potential by elevating their brand presence. That's what we do. We amplify you so that you can make a bigger impact in the world. I don't just deliver branding services. I don't just do cool videos like you saw, cool graphic designs. That, that's part of the services. But what we really do is we amplify leaders to make a positive impact, to live their full potential and monetize their mission. That came through our value identity. And once you combine all three, visual, verbal, and value, that's how you can actually build a brand identity, whether it be your personal brand or your company brand. Now, I'm going to get into networking in just a minute. I'm going to show you something really cool, and I'm going to give everybody a free gift. But I want you to understand the power and value of your personal brand in addition to your company brand. I can pretty much guarantee that every single person on this call has a company brand. But probably a very small percentage have been actively working on their personal brand. If you've been working on your personal brand or wanting to work on your personal brand, drop inside the chat. And Maybe you've been thinking about it or somebody's been telling you, you know, you really should promote yourself. You should work on your personal brand. Let me tell you right now, they're right. And the reason they're right is because you can only make a certain amount of impact through your business and your company. You will make 10 times, 100 times the impact through your personal brand. And because I had limited time, I didn't do a presentation today. I'm just kind of sharing. Otherwise, we'd be here for three hours plus. But if you think of Elon Musk, Tesla does not have as many followers as Elon. And Tesla by itself, even though it's a very well-known brand that people do love, Tesla will never make the amount of impact in the world that Elon will. So 
I'm not telling you to build your personal brand to make more money. I'm inviting you to consider building your personal brand so that you can make a bigger impact. And I believe the more impact you make, the more money you'll make. Focus on impact. Don't focus on dollars. And it'll also fulfill you a lot more. Because in the end of the day, I'll tell you this, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how nice your cars are, how cool the clothes is, the penthouse on the 76th floor, that is not going to give you fulfillment. What gives you true fulfillment is being able to give to others. And if there's anything that I leave you with in this presentation, it's that. It's how do you elevate yourself in the world so you can make a greater impact in your business, in your community, in your family. And, you know, do it because you care about others. Don't do it for yourself. I, I tell people, it's a lot of work to put yourself out there. It is, but I don't do it for me. I do it because I understand that the more perception of value I have in the world, the more people listen to me, the more people follow me, the more people share me, and then I can make a positive impact. You know, I speak at my church. I volunteer every Sunday. I run the online service. I go on mission. And because I have influence, a lot of people listen and follow, and we can make a bigger impact and change. Now let's move on to networking because I only have a few minutes left. Drop in the chat if you attend networking events. Just put yes or no, just so I get a good feel of, of my audience. If you attend any type of networking whatsoever, just put yes or no. Okay, Very, okay. so it's, it's promote majority of yes. Now, for those of you that put no, I just want you to understand this is a networking event. This constitutes a networking event. So you do attend networking events, just so you know, all right? Now, there's two things that you can primarily do at any type of networking event, whether it's a conference, a trade show, a seminar, a mastermind, or you call it a networking event, doesn't matter. If you mix with other people in an event, that's considered a networking event. There's two things that you can do to get more connections and gain business. Number one is you meet people one-on-one. -on -one. That's pretty much we all do that. Meet people one-on-one. -on -one. Number two is you have the opportunity to present, which is what I'm doing right now. We're all at an event. We all have the opportunity to connect one-on-one, -on -one, but I have the opportunity to present. So I want to show you quickly two ways that I have developed the most effective way to network and present at any type of event. So number one, we can build more relationships and connections, which will lead to potential business. Now, write this down. Whenever I attend an event, there's three things I'm looking for. Write these down. Number one, I'm looking for business. I'm looking to get a client. And I think all of you are as well. But number two is I'm looking for services that I can benefit. So I'm looking to become someone else's client. And number three, I'm looking for JVs, joint venture partnerships. I'm looking for people that we can come together and we can share our databases. We can promote one another. We can leverage each other's services. So I'm looking for clients. I'm looking to become a client and I'm looking for joint venture opportunities. Every single person you come across can be one of those three or multiple of those three. If you attend networking events just trying to get business, I challenge you to shift your mindset and look for all three. Now, how do we connect with people one-on-one -on -one at events? Or more importantly, how do you give your information to someone that you met at an event? Drop it inside the chat. How do you give your information to someone that you meet at any type of event? How do you do it? What do you do? Card, card, cards, business cards, digital cards, start talking and networking, send them a text, business cards, social media, business cards, email, text, cards, digital cards. Okay, so we have a good variety of mix. Now, here's what I'm going to say. I only give business cards to people I do not want to follow up with because this is the most ineffective way to network and connect with people. 
Why? Because when someone gives me a business card, what do we do with this business card? Drop it in the chat. What do we do when someone gives you a business card? Right? <laughs> Take the trash. No, we wait till we leave to put it in the trash. We put it in the pocket or the purse, right? Later at home, you can throw it in the trash. But just understand, like it's not going into my cell phone. So if you're still handing people a business card, you're giving them work. Just consider it's 10 digits. You want me to open my phone and type in 10 digits? Like, do you believe I have that kind of time? And your name? And if your name has more than three letters in mine, that's way too much time. I don't have time to do that. So consider that if you give someone a business card, you're really giving them work. And it's really going to be difficult for them to follow up with you. So I tossed these things out six years ago. And I moved to social media. And I saw people put in their social media. Because I figured, you know what? I'm at a networking event. If I hand someone my business card with my business information at a networking event, what are they going to feel I'm trying to do? Drop it in the chat. If I meet you at a networking event, I give you my business card with my business information. What do you feel I'm trying to do? Look at the chat. I think we can all agree that you feel like they're trying to sell you. Now, we all know that nobody wants to be sold, even though we all want to buy. So if we all agree that when you give someone your business card with your business information, we make them feel you're trying to sell to them. Do you think that's a good strategy to use moving forward in this new digital age that we live in? No, it's not. So social media was my way of saying, okay, I'm not going to make them feel I'm selling to them. I'm going to make them feel I'm building a relationship with them. Because on social media, it's social, right? We're building a relationship. We're getting to know each other. But there was one problem. How do I know which social media this person likes? Now, all the millennials use Instagram, right? They're like, hey, what's your IG? And I'm like, but wait a second. Like, it just, it feels uncomfortable to do that. And how do you know I use IG? How do you even know I check my IG? So I ran into a problem. I wanted to give them my social medias to be more social and not be so salesy but there was no way to know which one they liked. So I had an idea. I said, wouldn't it be awesome if I could give them all my social medias in one link and let them decide how they wanted to connect with me, how they wanted to research me, how they wanted to build rapport and a relationship? Because I understand if I want them to buy from me, I got to get them emotionally connected, right? We got to get them to, to like and trust me. And I'm going to use it through the way that everybody researches each other nowadays is through Google and social media. So what I created was what I refer to as a 360 site. Hence the name 360, right? You connect from 360 degrees. And I'm going to drop in my 360 site inside the chat. And you guys can all click on it. Let's see here, everyone. Okay, so you can take a look at my 360 site. You can visually see it. Oh, wow, Suzanne was on it. Now, here's another little technical, Suzanne. You got to copy the URL, otherwise... Zoom won't hyperlink it and they can't click on it. I do a lot of Zoom, so I got a lot of little tidbits for all of you guys. Okay, click on that link, take a look at it, right? Now, there's a pop-up and that's obviously if you wanna set up your own 360, but close the pop-up and go ahead and, and look at everything that's on there. It's basically every single thing that's on Google in one place, nicely organized for you to do as much or as little research and due diligence as you want. Because we all know there's some people that do a lot of freaking research and there's some people that just want to see the basic stuff. I'll watch a video and I'm good. I, I know the person. Super easy, super simple, right? So here's my psychology. I'm meeting someone for the first time at a networking event. I don't want them to feel I'm trying to sell to them. I want them to build a relationship. I understand that buying decisions are based on emotion backed by logic and I also know this, it takes a minimum of seven to 12 exposures before someone makes a buying decision. So there's no point in me trying to sell or talk about my business until this person has had a minimum of seven to 12 exposures to who I am. Otherwise, I won't even get into a business conversation. It's not worth it because statistically, from a marketing perspective, I already know that no one is going to make a buying decision without those exposures. Now, that exposure can be your Facebook, it can be your Instagram, it can be your LinkedIn, it can be an email, it can be a video, it can be a podcast, it can be your article on Forbes, on Entrepreneur. These are all different exposure points, but they need a minimum of seven to 12 
before they're even going to consider buying from you. So what I told myself was this. I said, wait, I don't want them to feel I'm selling. I want to connect with them, relationship driven, emotionally connect with them. And I need seven to 12 exposures. Otherwise, I can't even have a business conversation. So let's give it to them on a silver platter and let's put everything the way that they would want to find it if they went on Google. I even have my Google search. When you click the media button at the very bottom, it takes you to my Google search on top of my USA Today and my Forbes and all that kind of jazz, right? But it just gives more trust and credibility. So that's from, Network. thank you for all the great comments, by the way, I'm, I am reading them. I, I appreciate all of you. And I am gonna give you the opportunity for, for all of you to have your own free 360 site. And my team will connect with you to actually set you up um, with what's called a starter session to explain on how you can do that. So I dropped it in the chat. You can click that little link. You can, you can register later. You don't have to do it now. But my team, it's a free site. You get to play with it and my team will set you up. But before we go, I only have a few minutes left. Presenting. Does anyone do any type of presenting currently or is considering doing any type of presenting, live, virtual, anything like that? Let me just see in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, there's a good a couple of them. Okay, this is going to change your life. I guarantee that this strategy will be the number one strategy for lead generation during a presentation that you've had in your entire life, or I'll give you $1,000. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to share my screen. All right, let me know when you guys can see my screen. I'm going to look to the right because my screen is on the right. I have multiple screens. I'm going to go to my 360 site. I'm going to click on here. And I'm going to click on my QR code. Now I'm going to have every single person that's watching right now open up their cell phones, open up your camera or your QR code scanner, whichever one, and scan my QR code on your screen right now. Now, when it loads, do not do anything. Do not touch anything when it loads. I'm going to tell you what to do. And this strategy can be done virtually and it can be done in live in person. Okay. I'm giving you 20 more seconds and then I'm shutting my screen off. Make sure you scan it and it opens up on your phone and do not touch anything. 10 more seconds, pull out your cell phone, camera, sc scanner, scan it, let it pop up, delay, five, four, three, two, one, turning off my screen. Okay, you should see a button that says save contact. Click the save contact button. Now, if you're an iPhone user, it's gonna pull up my contact, Scroll to the very bottom, click create new contact. Once you click create new contact at the very bottom, then click done. If you're an Android, it's gonna ask you to download. It's gonna have the VCF card and it's gonna say, where do you wanna save it? And then you're gonna pick your Gmail, your phone and then click open and then click save. There's a few more steps on Android, but iPhone, click it, scroll to the bottom, create new contact, click done. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna do some, something separate, okay? I'm gonna share my screen once again. There we go. All right, I want you to go back to the 360 site. I'm gonna make this um, mobile version. And I want you to click on this contact button right here on the top right. So go back to my 360, rayperez360.com. And from your cell phone, can't do this from the computer, from your cell phone, I want you to click this contact button. Now let's see who's the fastest in the group. Click the contact and at the very top, it says send text. I want you to click on send text. Text me your full name and your best email. Full name and best email. And I'm gonna send you my full presentation, a whole hour and 30 minutes on how to leverage the power of your personal brand to attract more leads and more sales for your business. This was just a quick overview. I'll give you my full presentation. Okay, Dantel, I got you. Tiffany, I got you. Robert, uh, Kulan, Eli, Brian, Zachary, Benjamin, uh, Kirk, Scott, Kira, Jaya, or Jai, Cynthia, Karen. Wow, you guys are so fast. <laughs> Alex, uh, Next Level Consulting. I didn't see your name. Add your name, Next Level Consulting. Uh, Lee, uh, Darlene, Kara, Holly, James, Harlow, you didn't send me your name, Darielle, 
Let me see. Jason, Eon, Melissa, Erase Debt. You didn't send me your name. <laughs> Full name and best email, guys. Uh, Daniela Gomez. There we go. Barry, Jabril, Melissa. All right. Jay Bird, send me your name as well. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a minute. And my time is basically up. If you are a presenter and you're doing any type of presentation, live in person, virtual, even a podcast that is not live and is pre recorded and that gets posted months later, this will be the number one lead capture strategy you'll ever have in your life. Why? Because you're not sending them to an opt-in page. You're not making them fill out a form and feel like a, like a dollar sign. You're actually connecting with your audience because that is what they care about. They care about you as the speaker who has the power and the authority. They want to connect with you. They don't want to be an opt-in. They don't want to go to a landing page. Does that make psychological sense? Put in the chat, do you agree that you don't like filling out opt-in forms? Or if you do like filling out opt-in forms, put that you do like filling out opt-in forms. But I don't like filling out opt-in forms. So if you agree with me, then you agree with 98% of the rest of the world. So as a speaker, why would you send them to a landing page? Now, the answer is simple, because that's what all the marketers tell us to do. I get it. I was a marketer. I did the same thing. But then I stop worrying about marketing, and I start focusing on relationships, and I start caring more about people. And the moment I started doing that, my business exploded. And I would get more leads and more connections than any other marketing strategy I ever came up with. Now, if you want the recording of how I do this, I'll give you my script, and I'll give you my video. The only thing you need to do is register for a free 360 site and join the optimization session with my team. When you connect with my team, tell them, please send me Ray's presenting lead capture process. His presentation lead capture process. They'll send you my video training and they'll also send you my script. So you literally can copy my script, change my name, change my words and add yours. And you'll literally be able to do exactly what I just did in any event that you guys speak at. I hope this was beneficial. Can you drop in the chat? Did you guys enjoy this? Was this good? I just want to know, make sure Ty invites me back because, you know, if I didn't do a good job, he ain't bringing me back. So, yes, this was good. Oh, my God. Bless you all. Thank you so much. Oh, man. Thank you. Look at the hand claps. I love it. So much love in this room. I love it. I can make your hands clap. Said I can make your hands clap. Business is built on relationships, right?